Hi, I'm Bishop Greg Davis, and welcome to the second night of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. I am so excited about what God has been doing here at Full Gospel. We are live in Nashville, Tennessee, here of the home of our presiding bishop, Bishop Joseph Warren Walker, and of course, our founder, Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton. Tonight is going to be a spectacular night. Last night, Bishop Liston Page blessed us, but tonight, Pastor Prophetess Janet Floyd from Louisiana is going to be our preacher. Of course, you're going to hear great singing. The house is filling up tonight. I'm going to be your host uh, for the next 29 minutes, and then we're going to go into the worship service in just a little bit. we got some great people that we're going to talk to. Listen, there is a number on the screen that you can call, and that number is for prayer. We we have probably under the leadership of Bishop William uh, Murphy, Jr., one of the greatest intercessory prayer teams there is, and they are there to pray for you. They are trained, they are pastors, they are ministers, they are elders, trained to pray for you. So the number's on the screen, and I want you to call. I'm going to be your host for the pre-show, Bishop Greg Davis. To all my Word Network family, I love you so much. I am a part of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship now for uh, almost 27 years. This will be my 25th year that I've been a bishop in this organization. I am grateful to the Lord. We're going to be talking to some grateful people, some great people, even some of our sponsors. we got some information for you, so I want you to get ready to receive this. Uh, company now is one of our sponsors of the fellowship. They are uh, NARAB. And we're going to tell you more about them. They just got off the stage. And we have some great partnerships in the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Again, I want to welcome you. You're watching the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship uh, pre-show. We're going into the service in Lowell. 90 million homes right now we are reaching over 200 countries. I've seen people from all over the world that tell me that they watch. Um, they watch the Word Network. They watch Full Gospel Daily. And so we're grateful. We have here. It's NARAB. They're one of our sponsors. You know, I used to be over, they don't know this, but I used to be over the exhibit hall. And one of my dreams was to have a pavilion where people would learn, not just come and buy new bags and knock off Gucci and Louis, but that they would, I call it now, they would have a takeaway. And so full gospel on the leadership of our bishop, Bishop Joseph Warren Walker uh, the third. We're, we're getting there, and so I'm proud to announce uh, our one of our title sponsors, NARAB, and they're going to tell you what NARAB means. If I were you, I'd get your notepad open because we're going to give you something. That's what Full Gospel does. We're cutting edge. You know, there's other movements out there in denominations, but we're cutting edge. We can ready to tell you how you can be the, you know, we always say those things, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. I'm going to get just what's mine. It's being transferred. Well, we got some hookups here where you can you can own, you'll be the lender and not the borrower. You'll be the owner. When God brought the children of Israel out, they came out with wealth. And so we're going to tell you how to get it. I want them to introduce himself. They're NARAB and you are? Courtney Johnson Rose, second vice president of NARAB. Bishop Craig Warsham, National Director of Faith-Based and Community Partnerships. And NARAB stands for? The National Association of Real Estate Boca. We are the realtors. WW dot a r e b dot com well, we're glad to have you partner i speak on both sides uh full gospel side we we welcome you and we're glad to have you partner with us and then welcome to the word network i speak from that side too so tell us bishop why are y'all here what i mean why would you be here partnering with us well in our quest to create two million new african-american homeowners how many two million new african with a m yeah m and we believe that uh, the best place to find two million African Americans and is in the most powerful institution in the world, which is the black church. And so we believe that fostering these relationships between real estate brokers and the church will help us create a movement of black home ownership within the church. So since you've been here, what's been the response? Because I've passed by the booth area several times and I've seen uh, I've seen people stopping by and talking. Uh, what has been the response? It has been tremendous. We have offered eight classes throughout the pavilion. We've also had people, over 100 people, stop and get credit reports and get counseling to be able to sit on. At the conference? At the conference. So you can come to the conference, be able to get access to all of these resources right here at the Full Gospel Conference. So 
I remember in the Bible when Jesus went to uh, the house of Mary and Martha, and one was serving, busy, the other one was sitting at his feet, worshiping and gathering the spiritual part. Bishop, isn't it necessary that we have these kind of partnerships? The spiritual, the Bible says first, the natural, then the spiritual. Isn't it important that we have these kind of meshing of together? It is absolutely critical that we bring the natural and spiritual together. I believe that programs like this here at the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship make the Word of God become flesh. It becomes alive. The people feel the Word. They see the Word in action. It becomes tangible. This is a necessity. So now those that are watching, um, can they get the same, I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm get street right now, can they get the same hook up? They can. They can text <laughs> on their phone 888-111 and text the word NARAB, N-A-R-E-B, 888-111 on their text line. And okay, give it to us because you know, grandma and them out there, mama and them, and mama, they got to get a pen. They, they, they don't know how to work yet. So, text Three eights, three ones. Eight, eight, eight. Three eights and three ones. And text NARAB, N A R E B. That will connect you to us. We have 93 chapters across the country, so we have a professional in every major city in this country to help. Now, for those that don't have a phone, I'm talking about, the, you know, they, uh, baby, I don't know how to text. I know how, I know how it is. Is there another way that they can get in touch also? Yes, we have our national uh, website, nareb.com, and on there is a number to our national office and contact information for each of our 93 local chapters. Plenty of ways to connect with us. Now, Bishop, there are other pastors watching. There may even be other denominational leaders. Can they also connect like this, like Fuga? Yes, and so if they are watching tonight and you are a faith leader, Text 888-111-NAREB. Text that, and we will connect you to one of our local chapters. If you want to see your members become homeowners, if you want to see your members receive services that, that address foreclosure prevention, first-time homebuyer counseling, and real estate development, call us. Reach out to us. We are here to serve you. We will come to where you are and help you with your needs. Now, I my, my, my armor bearer, he works for um, Rocket Mortgage, Quicken Loans, and he was—he's a—he's a mortgage broker, and he—that's what I'm saying. He was like, "They go Quicken Loan, they go—they here," and he went and introduced himself. Some other banks that are here, just so people know that this is real. I mean, you have a lot—it's like a mall. We have—we're uh, so excited and grateful for our partners. Chase Bank has partnered with us. United Securities Financial has partnered with us. Quicken Loans has partnered with us. SunTrust Mortgage has partnered with us. Wells Fargo has partnered with us. Bank of America has partnered with us. So we have a plethora. And they're here. And they're here. So we have a plethora of partners that believe in black home ownership the same way we do. All right. 888 111. You're going to text NARAB. N A R A E B. All right, y'all. Y'all got it? Listen, if you want to own, they'll find a way. What about bad credit? Because that's what everybody said. You know. I mean, credit counselors that to clean it up, to help you, to walk you through it. Also, too, all of the full gospel delegates will receive what's called a fin locker. That's a financial locker, a financial tool that will help them be able to save, be able to improve their their credit right in the comfort of their own homes. And I want to say that I'm getting ready to let them go. But here's what I want to say to full gospel. If you didn't get to the conference, you get a chance to get in on this, too. So just like you right here. Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship members, not just y'all, though, but especially Full Gospel that's watching all over the country, all over the world. You can get in on this also. Thank you again on behalf of Full Gospel and even the Word Network. I appreciate you all partnering with us. All right, bless you. Bless your bishop. Good to see you. All right. All right, you heard it right here. We got great partnerships going on. You're watching the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. And I'm Bishop Greg Davis. Of course, you're watching the Word Network. There is a number on the screen by which you can call and you can receive prayer. Well, we're getting ready to brighten up your life right now. <laughs> you know, full gospel is, 
I was sharing with Elder Staff, we have so many different facets of Flow Gospel. You just heard from one of our sponsors. You learn how to own your own home and all that. But we have people that have grown up in Flow Gospel, and they're pastoring now. They're pastoring their daddy's church. Now, you know this young lady because you've seen a young preacher. Um, but she's also an overseer, a first assistant to Bishop William Murphy, the one that's saying, you know, you know the singer. Yeah, he's a part. Tasha Cobb last night received uh, platinum for one of her songs. And then Pastor Maya White, she's a part of our music ministry. She's also one of our preachers here in the, in the fellowship. She just finished, lit, lit up the place with intercessory prayer, but you've seen her on the network. Welcome, woman of God. Thank you, Bishop. You're a regular on word now. <laughs> Thank you, Word Network. I appreciate it. <laughs> Mr. Dale, we honor you. Thank we you so much. You. Yes, sir. Uh, and Bishop White, if you're watching. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> so, how many years have you been in full gospel? Well, this is our 26th year, so I've been in full gospel for 26 years. And we call them full gospel babies. babies. I was uh, 12 years old in the youth division 26 years ago. When, wow. when we got started. So there is somebody watching a, a young a young pastor, a young young woman pastor. Why is and just so you all know, we did a young preacher episode here and that's coming up in the next month. We and it's going to be awesome. It's it, amazing the first fellowship to do a, one of the young preacher series. But I just want you to talk about that the importance of being connected and not being a rebel, or as I call it, a gypsy in the spirit. Well, being a gypsy in the spirit is trash, so no, that's not really good. But you need a covering, and I believe that um, full gospel is, uh, well, for me, it's the worldwide movement that I support and undergird, but it's provided uh, a platform and teaching and modeling. Full gospel just doesn't teach you. They demonstrate uh, what it looks like, how you can move through it. And I believe that as a young preacher and uh, as a female pastor, you need to be a part of a fellowship that will embrace you and propel you forward. And that's what full gospel does for us. It propels us forward. It provides us with a safe place and provides us with an atmosphere where we can grow, where we can learn, and we can participate. I want you to talk about because we have, you know, Bishop Morton in, in, in the early years, he kept talking about family, family, family. We have become family. We are family. Well, you know what? I don't know if you remember, Bishop Davis' son and I were very, we grew up together. Javon, 12 years old, but, but Full Gospel created uh, relationships. And I think that's one thing that is imperative to be able to prevail in ministry and be successful. You gotta have key connections and Full Gospel created that place for me. And not only was it just relationships with people I would just see once or twice a year. No, we became family. We we would go visit and talk and all that. So it's we're we're really a family. Like we're really a family. And it's I believe that that's part of changing a generation too because it 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 puts us in a place where we uh, we don't just come to work together, but we focus on fellowship and relationship so that we can. And that, and that's the importance of being a part of something. So many of so many out there are loners. You're not a part of anything. And whether you're female or male or whatever the case may be, you need to be a part of something. And then you also uh, help oversee the music ministry. I do. I am Bishop Murphy's first assistant and our music ministry, like you said, we've got Tasha Cobbs, J.J. Harrison, Vashon Mitchell, um, just many. It, it's, a, it's a place, you can get everything at Full Gospel. You, our music ministry is thriving. We just released a new album a month of Sundays uh, but not only that but we're in we have regions and districts and states that are set up so that we are um, spreading the sound that we release here throughout the country so that we are literally one sound that's that's our vision so if someone wants to be a part of the music ministry they may not even be a part of folk gospel they just like to sing how can they reach out to you or the music ministry? go to our Instagram it's full gospel worship and send us a DM, send us your information. Uh, the great thing about Full Gospel is that we are a reformation, we are a fellowship, and so even if you're not a part of Full Gospel, we're fellowship. You can come on and we will gladly accept you. Go to our Instagram or you can go to our Facebook and it is FG Worship on Facebook and just send us your information and we'll, we'll get you plugged in, we'll get you connected. And then you can follow Maya White. 
Yep, at underscore Maya White. You can send me your information. I can forward it as well. And we'll make sure we connect with you because we want you to be a part of something bigger than you. There's a grace on our lives. There's a grace on full gospel to release the glory of God in the earth. And you need to be a part of that grace. And she's an amazing preacher, too. Y'all reach out to her. She's amazing preacher. She didn't ask me to do that. Amazing worshiper, too. Yeah, y'all y'all reach out to her, okay? She don't know this, but I'm inviting her in September. I had already told Chris Howe, so y'all hear from her. She coming to preach on the show, y'all. Let the healing begin. Yeah. Uh, I love you and appreciate you. Thank you. Go, go do your job now. You got to go do my job. We'll see y'all at Full Gospel. All right. <laughs> love you. You're watching the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. I'm Bishop Greg Davis. There's a number on the screen whereby you can call for prayer. You can call for prayer right now. Dial the number on the screen. If you're in need of healing, if you're in need of deliverance if you whatever you in need of there's a number on the screen put those operators to work right now listen so <laughs> they have a church back there bishop i want to introduce to you now come closer bishop i ain't going back his name is bishop jesse gavin pennsylvania this man of god has been with full gospel since day one and this year is very special and I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy, sad, if that's a word, happy, sad. He's retiring as a regional bishop of Northeast, is it Mid-Atlantic Mid region. Bishop, welcome to the Word Network. Thank you, sir. Happy to be here. Name of your church? Greater Calvary Full Gospel Baptist Church in Erie, Pennsylvania. Erie, pa hey, Erie, Pennsylvania. Bishop, talk about the journey and being a part of Full Gospel. Since we got, you was at my consecration. Yes, sir. Talk about the journey. Well, before Full Gospel, um, I had started pastoring Greater Calvary, been there 31, 32 years, and um, I was seeking a place to take our ministry because we were not regular Baptists. Um, and um, I saw an a advertisement on the TV, the Word Network, about a conference in New Orleans, the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Uh, unfortunately, that that blurb got out sooner than it should have and I went down a year early looking for the conference. I met with Bishop Morton, Pastor D, yeah. yeah. I never heard that story. Yeah, I was there a year early um, and we met. A year? That's why we're still running around consecrating everybody. <laughs> and so I, I really felt like this is a place that we could land and be happy and feel like we were at home. And um, when I met with Bishop Morton, he invited me to come to a planning meeting in Atlanta, and I went, and at that meeting, I was asked to be the first uh, state overseer of Pennsylvania and to go back and to found Pennsylvania, uh, to found Full Gospel in Pennsylvania, which the Lord allowed us to do. And then I was consecrated to state bishop and then eventually consecrated or elevated to um, regional bishop. And I've been in this position for like 21 years. What is a regional bishop, people that are watching? Because so many times people get in a convention or a fellowship and they don't have anybody to touch them. Just, it's just a national. What does that mean to be a regional bishop? Uh, a regional bishop is over an area of uh, states, and I'm in the mid-Atlantic region, and um, that bishop is there to uh, oversee uh, the uh, state bishops and or state overseers and to make sure that everything, every information that they need about Full Gospel is there and, and to help promote and to build Full Gospel in, in that particular region. Um, this fellowship is relational. It is relational. Um, there are people that I am in relationship with now that I didn't even know before Full Gospel, but uh, we have become uh, in relationship, they are brothers and sisters, and uh, we have been able to lean on each other, to assist one another, to help build each other's ministries, and uh, it's just been such a wonderful and powerful uh, experience for me. I have benefited from it, I believe, more than um, I have, you know, helped others to uh, benefit from it. So, Bishop, you're retiring this year. First of all, we honor you. We thank you for your service. You're a little older than me. I'm not too far back. But seriously, we thank you for your service. You've been probably one of the most faithful bishops in full gospel. You and your family, your church, and we thank God for you. 
what's next? Well, I'm going to continue to pastor my church and um, follow the leading of the Lord, whatever um, he would have me to do. Um, our family continues to increase with grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and so we can concentrate on that. Of course, I'm still going to be a part of the fellowship. I'm not going anywhere. They're still going to see my face, and I'm still going to be involved, but I'm just going to um, follow whatever the leading Lord has for me to do. Thank you, Bishop. Tell us where the church is again. The church is Greater Calvary, Full Gospel Baptist Church in Erie, Pennsylvania. What's the street? What's the street? 2624 German Street. What time of service? 10.30 a.m. And they love to have church, y'all. Yes, we do. Love you, Bishop. Thank you, sir. Love you. Take care now. Bishop Jesse Gavin, again, you're watching the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. And uh, I'm Bishop Greg Davis, and this is our pre-show. And we're talking to some of our leaders now. And this man needs no introduction. I, I'm going to make him laugh. I grew up listening to him preach on the word. <laughs> you know him as Dr. Craig Oliver. We know him as overseer. And uh, he's over our pastor's division. He's over a conference called Propel. We'll tell you more like about that. Overseer Oliver, welcome to the Word Network. Well, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be a part of it. Overseer, how long have you been a part of Full Gospel? I've been a part of Full Gospel now for about four years. I have the privilege of serving, as you stated, the overseer of the uh, pastor's division. And, of course, the conference that we host is called Propel, which is designed to help to accelerate your leadership and to take it to a whole other level. So, now, we know about um, Propel. It, it's it's, it's kind of took on its own, own piece. But now, what most people don't know is that you do things with the pastors here, class here, in the national meeting. Talk about that. Yeah. So here in the national meeting, we have a, um, a class that is called LIFT. LIFT stands for Leaders Inspired to Facilitate Transformation. So we meet every single day for two hours dealing with leadership principles to help build leaders so that they can build the local church. So it's not just going on for pastors at the pastors meeting, it's also going on here. Absolutely. Not just for pastors, but all types of church leaders. Because, again, the whole concept is to bring about transformation in that leader so that leader can bring transformation in the life of their church and ministry. What is the benefit or the takeaway for a pastor and to bring his leaders to both meetings? What would be the takeaway? I think one of the takeaways is simply this here. First of all, understanding that God has a call upon your life. And in order to facilitate that call, you have to become a more equipped leader. When you look at Jesus and the life that he had with the disciples, it was built on the whole concept of building them, establishing them in the faith so that they can turn the world upside down. And that same takeaway holds true for Propel and even for Liv. I want you to just, for just about 60 seconds, encourage because we've been seeing all over the world. I want you to encourage a senior pastor that's watching. They may be in a rural area and it's not growing. They may be in the suburbs and or somebody just started uh, a planted church. I want you to take a, just a minute and on behalf of the fellowship and yourself, just encourage them. Absolutely. So to you, Pastor, regardless of the size, regardless of the setting of your ministry, God has a plan for your life. God has something that he wants you to do. God wants you to advance his kingdom. And a matter of fact, dealing with size and, subs and even setting, John the baptizer was a voice crying out in the wilderness. And people from the city came all the way into the wilderness to hear him preach and proclaim the gospel of Christ. So again, your ministry is not based upon your size. Your ministry is not based upon your setting. Your ministry is based upon the good hand of God being upon you. So I encourage you to stay the course. I encourage you to continue to trust God. I encourage you to continue to do what God has called you to do. And watch how God will open doors and even use you to advance his kingdom. Them. Be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged, my sister. In Jesus' name, amen. How can a pastor get in touch with you if they want to be a part right quick? If you want to be a, a part, first of all, of Propel, we will be meeting in Atlanta, Georgia, October the 15th through the 17th at Changing a Generation. As well, I have the joy and privilege of pastoring the Elizabeth Baptist Church, and I can actually be contacted at craig.oliver at elizabethbaptist.org. craig.oliver at elizabethbaptist.org. 
connect with him if you want to uh, be a part of Propel or even Full Gospel as a pastor, and he'll lead you in the right direction. Dr. Craig Oliver, listen, go to his website. I can't tell you all his service time. They have like marathon, like Saturday, Sunday, all day long. So just go check out the website. Dr. Oliver, thank you. Thank you. Obviously, appreciate you. All right. You're watching the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, and we are in worship. We're going into the service in just a little while. <coughs> <coughs> Prophetess Janet Floyd will be bringing the word tonight, so you need to get ready. Call somebody and tell them there is a number on the screen right now, and that number is for prayer. Dial the number right now. There are prayer counselors there to pray for you. They are knowing it. And, and, and just a minute, I'm going to ask you to give. We're going to lead you into a place of giving. Right now, uh, I got in trouble last night. I got, I got all kind of hate uh, text messages and DM. Somebody threatened me on my text messages saying, we want to see Brown. Well, you see Brown now. We have something called the Voice of the Fellowship, which is about to happen behind us now. But this young man, this young man called the Ravens out last night. He said the Ravens were coming. And so, I, and, and let me tell you something, one of the greatest churches in Memphis had a chance to minister at his church, Radical for Christ. That's what the church ought to be called, not logic, Radical for Christ. He is anointed, he has a healing ministry, anointed on his life, and he was tremendous last night. I want you to uh, welcome now, Overseer Stephen Brown. God bless you, Bishop. Thank you. You mighty clean. Well, I knew I was coming to hang out with you. You got it from your daddy. I, you know, I've been seeing your daddy. <laughs> yes, sir. Logic, he's on here. Hey, everybody. Logic. Yes, what sir. is that? Light of Glory International Church, a.k.a. Logic, the church where it just makes sense. Uh, arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. We want to be a people that reflect and radiate Jesus Christ everywhere we go. Let your light shine. That's what our ministry is about. How long have you been in Full Gospel? Um, I officially joined Full Gospel when Bishop Walker took the helm. And so then... Um, been around though. Oh yeah, I've been, I've been dating for a while. But when Bishop took the ham and uh, being uh, up under his uh, mentorship and him being my pastor, when he got the nod, I just thought it was right to go ahead and submit myself to his leadership and uh, the umbrella for gospel. And, and what has, you know, I like it because we've talked to people that have been here, like Bishop Gavin <laughs> from the beginning, and now uh, Bishop Oliver, Overseer Oliver, four years. It's a good meshing. We see those of us that have been here under Bishop Morton, and then those that have come in under Bishop Walker, and it, we become family. Because I didn't even know it was that short that you've been here. So what has the experience been for you since you've been here? Well, the experience for me has been absolutely amazing. The culture that you guys said as far as full gospel, being a family, when Bishop Morton laid this thing out, when I joined, I really felt like family, and I still feel like family today. As for me, I don't know about any other preacher, but I needed that for my my personal life, for my ministry. I needed my church to be a part of something that was bigger than what we were doing. And I wanted I wanted to be connected to a family. And every time I come to Full Gospel, anytime we do anything, it's literally a family reunion. So I, I, I need family. So you did something called the Voice of the Fellowship last night. What is that? Uh, it's like... Uh, an opportunity that the leadership of this fellowship gives uh, the up and rising ministers of the gospel a chance to just showcase their gifts and preach the gospel uh, on this platform that can literally change your life. And last night, I had an opportunity to share at that moment, and I'm, uh, I'm telling you, it haven't even been 24 hours yet, and my life already changed. Are you serious? Tell them about this. Is one of the this is probably the most major platform in the world in the body of Christ. And when I set my feet on that platform that was birthed out, not branded out or not bought out, but birthed out by Bishop Paul S. Morton. You can literally feel the fire of God and, 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 and Bishop Walker has taken this thing and we're going on, upward and forward. And I'm just telling you to stand on that platform last night on the shoulders of those two men was literally life changing. I want you all now to go to the phone, dial the number on the screen. I want you to sow in the full gospel. There are pastors that are watching. If you can get that $50 seed tonight and sow into something greater, I want you to make an offering appeal to the people before we go into the sanctuary. Yes, sir. Listen, I preached a sermon last night entitled The Ravens Are Coming. I really believe, I'm telling you, I believe that we're in a season of supernatural assistance. All right? Um, Elijah, I'm sorry, the prophet had to 
obey one order from the Lord. He said, go hide yourself by the brook Cherith, and I'm going to command the ravens to feed thee there. It was a season of supernatural provision released over the man of God. So if that's you tonight, there is one instruction from the Lord. Bishop has called out a $50 seed. If that's you, and you know you're getting ready to walk into a season of super, supernatural assistance, obey the word of the Lord tonight and watch what God does. We have decreed and declared that by the 4th of July, by the 4th of July, something supernatural is going to happen. Sow that seed right now and watch how God sends the ravens to your life and your ministry. Go now, sow that seed of $50. We're getting ready to go into the service. I want God to bless you tonight through the word of God tonight. Dial the number on the screen there. Prayer counts is there. But if you're in need of healing, in need of deliverance, whatever you're in need of, sow that seed tonight. Believe God right now for your healing, for your miracle. Father, we pray right now as they sow. God, increase them more and more in Jesus' name. You're watching the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Welcome. Call a friend. Call a neighbor. We're in the sanctuary. We're gone. you are in all the earth father we thank you oh god for your power and your presence now holy spirit come in the room and be exactly who you are be the healer be the deliverer be the resurrected savior father we thank you in advance oh god for transformation is taking place tonight in jesus name amen and amen clap your hands and give god glory uh, you may take your seats. Uh, oh, God, I love you in the presence of the almighty God. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting ready to dive into the word of the Lord. I need you to grab your Bibles, your iPads, your phones, and go to whatever device you have. And we're going to James 1. Uh, uh, Bishop Walker, God bless you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Stephanie. Thank you for being an example of God's grace here in the earth. And to you, Bishop Morton, I love you. I, I call you the father of fathers. Thank you, Father, for resurrecting me and my family. And to our mother, the mother of the fellowship, uh, Dr. Deborah Morton, she is a woman of absolute holiness. So thank you for being the example of holiness in the earth and to city of love. Holla back at me. Thank you, God. And full gospel, I do thank you again for the opportunity. Les, you are the greatest. And to my only three girls in the world, joy, faith, and angel love. And to my niece, Taylor, I do bless the name of God. You should be at James chapter 1 and verse number 2. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. It says, my brethren... Oh, my sister in, it says, count it all joy. Oh, God, I give you glory. Oh, when you fall into various trials, or oh, when you have to deal with the test, or oh, when James says to count it all joy, it implies that there are times in our life when we will be faced with situations where we don't necessarily feel, we feel joy. Uh, people of God, William Vander, uh, uh, Vander Hoven uh, uh, said this, uh, life does not need to be easy in order for it to be joyous. Uh, and so what he's actually saying to me is this, uh, there are going to be times, ladies and gentlemen, when we are going to face a trial, but when the trial comes, uh, we've got to make a choice. Uh, when the trial enters into our life, uh, we got to make uh, a choice. Lay hands on three people and, and say you've got to make a choice. I'm encouraging you to touch somebody that you can come into agreement with and say you've got to make a choice. I've come today to talk to everybody that 
that's on the backside of the mountain. I've come to talk to every woman and every man that's in the battle and you are determined to survive. Not just thrive, survive, mother, but those that want to thrive. Shout with me. You've got to make a choice. Uh, James says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials or when you have to deal with, with, with certain texts. Tests. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't mind uh, sharing with you my honesty today. When the scripture says, count it all joy when you're going through various trials, I, I I had a little trouble getting with this. I had some challenges, if I can be honest with you, about getting with this. How in the world am I expected to count my pain as joy? How in the world am I expected to count my trouble as joy? God is bringing the body of Christ through a test. We tested with pain. We tested problems, and we are tested with people. There are times, ladies and gentlemen, that your friends will test you. There are times, ladies and gentlemen, that your family will test you. But I heard my bishop say that your friends will hurt you, but your family will finish you off. They have all come to test us. But this is what the Spirit of the Lord taught me when I was in my darkest hour. He said, friend, if you're going to pass the test, you got to learn how to approach the test a different kind of way. How many of you are sick and tired of failing tests? I'm sick and tired of going through the same thing over and over again and not seeing any level of success in my life. Well, if you want to pass the test, if you don't want to take the class for another season, listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. He said, teach my children that there is a method to passing the test. Not walking into the classroom with fear, not walking into the classroom with shame, but there is a method, children, to passing the test. He said, tell my children that when they go into the classroom to take the test, that they must learn to approach every test with joy. What are you saying to me? How in the world is this going to work out in my favor? Do you know the hell I'm going through? Do you know what I'm dealing with? My child can't make up her mind if she's saved today or if she don't want God today. How am I supposed to do this when my body is consistently failing me and my marriage is all jacked up? How am I supposed to do this when I got betrayal all around me? How am I supposed to count suffering? As joy, people of God, accounting trials, it's not like you and I know counting one, two, three, four, five. There is a difference, ladies and gentlemen, between counting and to count. Um, to count means to evaluate or to consider what you are getting ready to deal with. To count it's to evaluate your circumstance and evaluate it to the point that you make a choice about the outcome. What are you talking about, Pastor Fran? Three years ago this month, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I had no options. I didn't have the option of having a lung ec a lumpectomy. I had to have both of my breasts removed. I was in fear and I had major trepidation. But then I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me, though he slay me, yet uh, will I trust in him. I heard the Lord say to me, friend love, I know exactly what I'm doing. If you stick with me, you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I said, God, I'm going to stick with you all the way. He does not understand something, girl. My ways are not your ways. 
finger, neither are my actions your actions. You do it my way, and I promise you, you shall live. So I approached my cancer diagnosis just the way James said. I said, I'm going to count it all joy, even though my head may not understand it. My spirit knew right well what was going on. So the night before a nine and a half hour surgery, I went into my prayer closet while my husband was sleeping and I lifted up the name of Jesus. I said, you are my healer. You are my deliverer. Before they put the tag on my wrist, before they put the IV in my arm, I declared that I was a miracle. I declared that I was healed and I was made whole. I snatched my healing out of the devil's hands. I snatched my healing out of my doctor's hand. And only God was able to receive the glory because in the end, the word of the Lord says that if I count it all joy, I will be perfect. I will be complete. I will want and lack for nothing. Touch your neighbor and say, make a decision. If you gon' live, you got to decide to. If you gon' have joy, you got to make up your mind. If you gonna have peace, you got to decide to. Lay hands on yourself and say, I decide. I decided. This is not my emotions. I say this is my faith. This is not my emotions. This is my faith. For faith is the substance of things hoped for. I still had cancer in my body while I was giving him glory. I still had a lump in my breast while I was saying hallelujah. And the more you pray to him, not when you come out, but in the beginning of your suffering, the more you give him glory, I promise you that he will give you life and life more abundantly. Clap your hands, give him glory, and shout unto God. Shout unto God. I am alive. I am full. I am made whole. He is able 
to God. We're already on the Word Network, and that is a word from the Lord today. Amen. My God, look at what God has done. Tell your neighbor, don't look at me now. Come on, say, look at me when I come out. I need you to just tell somebody that. Folk be looking at you crazy, but tell them, look at me when I come out. Hallelujah. Because your crazy looks they're not going to stop my coming out. Do I have any determined people in the house? Come on, tell, touch somebody and say, I'm coming out of this. I don't care what it is. Tell them, I'm coming out of this, and I'm going to live full. Come on, somebody. I'm tired of half full people anyway. I'm getting ready to move up and live full. What a blessing one more time. Come on, let's give God praise. Ooh, Lordy. We have had some preaching this week. Come on, let's thank God for our presiding bishop and picking such guests that have preached the powerful word of God. We thank you and the whole team. And of course, to my good looking husband, I can't stop. Can't stop praising his name. I'm just blessed to all of our leadership. They know I love you, but they tell me, you know, protocol has been established, but I just have to thank God for our lead cabinet members. Of course, not only our bishop, but his wife, Dr. Stephanie was awesome in our women's meeting. Come on, let's thank God. She always adds, amen, such great advice. And we thank God for her and trans the transparency and she goes sophisticated and I go ghetto. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor you need it all, you need it all. Cause some of y'all don't understand it until you go down. I know, I know Michelle says go stay, you know, when they go, you go. But tell your neighbor sometime I go low. So y'all can understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. Ah, bye bye. Second presiding bishop, and he's been doing a great job. It's my son. Come on, give it up for Bishop Darrell S. Brister and Lady Brister. And one more time for third, uh, uh, third presiding, rather, Bishop Brandon, my son, Larry Brandon. Come on, and his lovely wife. And I said again, but I was talking about Bishop Love. Let's thank God for him. He's a hard worker. All right, and then our executive treasurer, Bishop Michael Kelsey and his lovely wife. We thank God for them and all the tears of leadership. I have just enjoyed uh, being in the midst, and I want to give a shout out for today's empowerment session, the Daughters of the Promise. Are y'all in the house? They're going to thrive no matter what, and we thank God for you. But we're excited, of course, to give to the Lord. It's our time to give, and our presiding bishop made it so plain and clear that when we know what we have to do, we just do it. Amen? No, no. I, I, you know, I come to the conference to give. 
Uh, some of y'all looking like, what? See, that's why I have to go low. I say I come. You better say amen, because I go real low. I started, I, once you go through a storm, you ought to learn something when you come out. One thing I learned was that stuff will happen so quick, you got to just make preparation, put some stuff aside. Come on, somebody. Don't spend everything. But you don't just want to save for good times, bad times, but you want to have something to sow. The Bible says, give and it shall be given. Well, how, if God thought we would have nothing, why would he tell us to give? Tell your neighbor, touch him softly, say you're always supposed to have something in your pocket. Come on, come on, tell him. Come on, say you ain't supposed to be broke. Look at him and convince them you're not supposed to be broke. Not the kingdom. Once he teaches us that you might come to him broke, deserted, and all that song we sing. But you shouldn't, Pastor, they shouldn't stay like that. You save to give, and guess what happens? When he gives, when you give, then he starts doubling and tripling what you gave. So then you always have something to give. Am I right about it? You always, he says, that's why he says I'll triple it and I'll double it and I'll whatever, because giving is our way in and our way out. So first of all, we want to thank you for what you've already given. Now, Bishop made it so plain, but listen, thus far you've given 42,000. I want you to clap your hands for what you've already given. Come on, clap your hands, yes. And so we are excited about the next, uh, our next two days as we finish this out today and tomorrow. All we have to give is $54,000. Look at your neighbor and say, I asked God for more than that. Look at your neighbor and say that. Come on. Say, I asked God for more. Some of y'all be asking for millions. Come on, you haven't given the mic yet. Come on, ask them for millions. But really, on a, I like to uh, make people laugh because it's medicine, but $54,000 with us, we can make that happen. And I always want to make it happen because I always do my part. And so tonight, very simple, I want us to all do what we can. But as I said, we can make this happen. Listen, the bishop, he told me, what can happen? I say I'm in agreement. He said forty-two thousand uh, dollars, but that was forty-two thousand dollars in the morning session. Listen, and I want you to understand we had almost a million-dollar budget, and just fifty-four thousand dollars left. I'm finished. They didn't say that to me, Bishop. That's even more so awesome. 42 today, and I want to uh, commend the women of God because they also added to that, giving 5,000 plus in our empowerment service to the fellowship. Come on, clap your hands, Daughters of the Promise. And they all weren't in here because we had lunches and all, but Bishop, as a leader, I will never lead from the back. I will always be up front doing something, doing my part more than the average person. You cannot lead from the back. So the leaders, I commend our state directors and our directors as they gave today, and the women of God. So we put a little dent in it, amen, with that 42,000. So I really thank God uh, for what he has done, but listen, if 15, if 1,600 people, listen carefully, gave, would give $17, $17, we would meet the budget for this service, which is $27,000. But if 1,500 people, someone say 1,500. If 1,500 people gave 
dollars a person. Lord have mercy. That's some nachos and some snowballs. My grandbabies, come on, the bill be fifty dollars when they finish with the nachos. If fifteen hundred people would give thirty-four dollars, guess what happens? We meet the whole budget. One million will be paid. I need somebody to rejoice like we know we can do that. Come on, clap your hands and praise him. So what I'm asking is if you would stand. Now I want to go with the 34 first. Is that all right, Bishop? 1,500. How many of you can do $34? You got all kinds of ways you can do it. Cash app, give the five, this and that. As long as there's some money, you could do it all those ways. Amen. If it's in there, praise the Lord. It doesn't work, but just because you have it on your phone. Somebody told me, I got cash app. That's not the question. Do you have cash in the app? Come on, somebody. Wave your phone if you got cash app. Come on. Everybody almost got it because you're always telling somebody to cash app you. We're going to cash app for God. And I'm, I always make jokes, but I'm so serious. The, I'm not apologizing that I'm not just surviving. I'm thriving. The one lesson I learned from my husband and another friend is always be ready to give to God. And so as I'm a tither and a giver, I'm supposed to be blessed. My hair is supposed to be up in a bun. Come on. God wants to pour out his blessing upon us till we are just, we can't help but be the light of the world. Because people just watch and say they serve a mighty God. How many know you serve a mighty God? Come on, lift those hands. Come on, where are you? Where are you? Let me see. Is he mighty? Come on, wait a minute. I feel him already blessing us. Because somebody is determined in their heart to give it don't really have a lot and I feel you right now those who will would you come those who will give the $34 would you do that quickly quickly come on come on come on $34 wow you made it easy Bishop and all of our leadership get your envelopes or come to the altar and give it to them $34 I can't give 34 I, I got to get more but Come on, people of God. We need, no, they're coming to come. If you don't have your envelope, come on, uh, those who are serving, they're giving them as they're coming, Bishop. They're in the aisles. Thank you so much. Hmm? Southern Barith is giving 100. Amen. I gave 500. Come on, somebody. Let's give it. Come on, people of God. Bless. Clap your hands for those who are giving the 34. Come on, let's celebrate them. They, they care. One thing about that. The fellowship. We have people that care. I wouldn't, as Bishop Walker said, ain't no better one nowhere else. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They're coming. Come on. Can you clap for them one more time? I did. Oh, I'm happy. Come on, I'm happy. I'm happy. I believe we're gonna meet the budget tonight. Who who's in agreement with me tonight? Oh, that didn't. I said we're gonna meet the budget tonight. Who believes that? I know you sold a lot, you came, you paid fair, but as I said, God is going to bless you. I'm just so excited that they even, I love to receive an offering because I'm a giver. And I see people getting blessed as they come, amen? Some people have a lot, some people don't, but the ones that don't, they get the same blessing as you do. Because those who have more, we should give more. Am I right about it? I commend our tiers of leadership. We have special taxation on us. And we give all year long. Come on, thank God for leadership. Clap your hands for them, because they keep the fellowship going. Come on, clap your hands. Amen, amen. This is the 34 coming? Oh, yes, come quick, 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 because you're getting a blessing. Come on, come on, put your flats on and come quickly. Come on. Come on, come on, I know. Glory to God. Oh, I feel the move of God. We're going to make this tonight. Tonight. 
Yes, the Word Network. I know y'all have been enjoying the Word that we are receiving in this house. And I want you to give tonight, of course. You can look on the screen there and you can give. You can give that $34 or you can give that $17. But I'm trying to see because God is moving by His Spirit right now. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. God is already opening doors. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now, those who can give the $17, those that can give the $17, listen, I say you don't have to always give to be, you shouldn't give to be seen, but you should at some point be seen giving. Can I say that again? Don't give to be seen, but sometimes, come on, be seen giving. Because you encourage somebody else. And you know what they look at? Now, I know she's going through and she's giving, he's giving. I'm going to give. Or they'll say, I thought she was broke, but now I see she's not. Come on, somebody. Whatever it says to them, you ought to be seen giving. He said, blessed are the cheerful giver. How could he call them cheerful if he couldn't see it? Those who are giving $17, would you get on your feet, come quickly to the altar? I believe the budget is being met. Because some people are going to give more than the 34, more than the 17. Clap your hands for them. 17 is just as important. One plus seven. Come on, somebody. That's eight. That's new beginning. Come on, get in, get in, get in. Wherever you are, come on, come on. If we do this, we don't have to even worry tomorrow night. We don't have to worry because the budget will be met and God will do just what he wants to do. I'm just excited about it. $17 if you're coming. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, can y'all just celebrate them? Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Come on. Let them know that God is well pleased. Whenever you do something in the name of the Lord, know that the Lord is pleased. I see you, my brother. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a gold shirt. I know you're giving. Come on. Hallelujah. That's off the chain right there. They don't say nothing but money. A gold shirt? What? Y'all ain't got nothing for him. What y'all call it? Gold. Come on, my brother. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, I'm excited. Come on. Ladies, don't y'all leave me out here by myself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now I want those who can give. How many of y'all going to give the best? You didn't have 34, but you had 17. You didn't have 17. Wave your hand at me if you say, but I'm giving something. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. At least try to give, come on, that eight for new beginnings because living full is about new beginnings. So we bless God for that. Also want to say as we're giving that we need those who have a pledge debt free. Um, Bishop Calvin Lockett will receive it down front. If you have your debt free pledge, would you bring it down front and our Bishop Lockett will be there to receive it. Also covenant partners. I, I talk about covenant partners. I just celebrated 11 years of pastoring. Can you believe that? After a storm. Come on, tell your neighbor all storms aren't bad. After a storm. And I just took on as my presiding and my founder said, this is the way we do the, uh, take care of the day to day. And we have like, like people in our ministry that commit 200 covenant partners to make sure that we give what we say we're going to give. We'll never be in charge and don't do our part. And so now this is your opportunity. If you're not a covenant partner, you're ready to become a 2019 covenant partner. Uh, would you raise your hands now? No, I'm sorry. No, you can go. You can go to the booth that's out there, the headquarters, and turn in your, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Go out Yes, yes, to the booth, and you can pay your covenant partner. It's not just a pin. I have my pin on because I'm a covenant partner. And you know what? When I became a pastor, Bishop wouldn't let me give on uh, uh, as a uh, a regular person, not even a peasant. He made me give on the bishop's level. I said, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. Come on. He said, you're going to be able to do it. And can I tell you, I got the bishop blessing. Come on, clap your hands and praise him. Come on, clap your hands and know every level goes higher and higher. Hallelujah. Uh, we work so well together, so I want you to really understand 
uh, the company partner program. Now this is, this is just for this week, so that's why I want you to get in on it. If you go to the booth tonight, tonight you are able to put $30 down on your $120 covenant partner. And this is what we're going to do. We are going to trust you with the other $90 to pay $10 a month. So you can get it, you can walk out of here tonight with a $120 pen and pay $10 a month. Now we hopefully, hopefully we can set it up one day where if you don't pay that $10 a month, we can send the repossession truck to your house and pick up the pen. But make sure that you leave here tonight. You can leave here tonight. I got my pen. And it's paid in full. You can pay it out in full now. You don't have to do the down payment. Uh, but I'm just trying to let you know what can happen. <laughs> got a little gangster in him. Repossessed him. Has everyone given, received an envelope? Let's just bless God for what was given. Father, we do thank and praise you now. For if no one else knows what we've done, you're keeping the record. Now reward your people accordingly. As only you can do, open every door. Lift them up to the level that you desire them to be. Whatever, God. Some just don't want money, but they want a healing. They want deliverance. Do it, God. May the budget be met. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, we say together, amen. And thank God. If you believe you did the best that you can, come on, clap your hands and praise him. I thank you. Tonight, they ask as I go, they want you to know that there is late night service. It's going to be powerful. And you know who's coming through, Prophet Todd Hall with a word from the Lord. So don't you leave, it's right here in this area. Now receive these beautiful, colorful people here that's looking so good in the Lord. I love you, God bless you. Dr. Janet Floyd is a renowned pastor and traveling evangelist. She is an itinerant speaker and the pastor of the New Beginnings Worship Center in Monroe, Louisiana, where she is pursuing her first love nurturing and strengthening the lives of God's people through the Word of God and the gift of prophecy. She is a practicing attorney, having received a Juris Doctorate degree and a Master's degree in English. Full Gospel, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Janet Floyd. We're gonna be blessed by the Word tonight, but we're gonna prepare the atmosphere we're blessed to have so many international personalities and artists as a part of our family tonight. We're going to get two for one tonight, Full Gospel. The first song you're going to hear is from our new record. If you don't have it, you must have been in sin for the last two weeks. You got to get it tonight. It's on iTunes. It's called It's My Season. And then after that, you're going to hear from our own J.J. Hairston. Do me a favor, put your hands on somebody and tell them he's a miracle worker. Let's go to church, y'all. Come on. Come on, full gospel, put your hands together. Jump on your feet, let's give God some praise in the house. Yeah. We're gonna speak over your life tonight. Come on, declare this. Come on, say. It's your season of grace. It's your season of grace. Your season of joy. Your season of joy. Your season of peace, yeah. Break. 
God, can we lift our hands and worship the Lord in here? Come on, lift your voice and give him glory. Come on, let's pull on him tonight. Hallelujah. Our God is a miracle worker. He can perform signs, wonders, and miracles. Yo no. 
Because you're God. You are the great God that sits on the circle of the earth and you pull out the sky just like it's a curtain. To thee all flesh must come. You are the great answer of prayer. Heaven declares your handiwork. The whole earth is full of your glory. Day into day utter a speech and not into night show forth knowledge. Father God we ask you now speak now. Father, speak, for your servant heareth. And let them that have an ear hear now what the Spirit will say to the church. Stand on the balcony of heaven tonight and shoot an arrow of deliverance. Do it and we'll bless you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and praise him everywhere. Come on, come on, come on, clap your hands the way you clap them at the football game. Come on, clap them the way you clap them at the basketball game. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Go back your head and shout hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and praise them, praise them, praise them, praise them. Amen. Everyone is standing. We give honor to God tonight who is the head of our life. I said we give honor to God who is the head of our life. And we thank God for Jesus. And for his precious blood that covers our soul right now, thank God for the Holy Ghost, the great keeper of the saints of God. Come on, clap your hands for our triune God tonight. Wait just a second. Clap them like you clap them at the casino. Put your hands together and bless your God tonight. Come on, clap your hands and praise them everywhere. While you're standing all over the field to be honest tonight, the group leader is a full gospel. Baptist fellow, clap your hands for our presiding bishop, prelate Bishop Joseph Walker III. Come on, clap your hands for him. Don't 
We love him tonight. Put your hands together for him. We thank God. Amen. For a second assistant, clap your hands for Bishop Daryl Brister. Come on, put your hands together, Louisiana, for Bishop Larry Brandon. Come on, clap your hands. We honor them tonight. And of course, our beloved founder. Amen. The founder, the father of the full gospel Baptist conference. Clap your hands for Abe, our beloved bishop. Bishop Paul S. Morton, come on, put your hands together and bless them. And of course, we are thankful for the beautiful women, the first ladies of full gospel. We thank God. Amen for Lady, praise God, Lady Walker. Thank God for Lady Brister. Amen. Thank God. Amen for Lady Brandon. Of course, our mother beloved. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. Amen for Pastor Deborah Morton. And to all of the magnificent pastors of full gospel that have been so kind to us, our beloved brother, we're thankful for Bishop Lester Love. Oh, didn't my girlfriend clap your hands for him, Lady Fran. Bishop Edward Stevenson, come on, clap your hands and for all of you so thankful for Bishop Greg Davis of the Word Network clap your hands for the man of God to all of you our father's children citizens of the kingdom we greet you tonight in the name of Jesus our soon coming king I am thankful amen specifically tonight for my one surviving sibling my sister is here tonight my brother-in-law Dr. Stacy Floyd Thomas Dr. Juan Floyd Thomas, amen, my beloved sister, Sister Yvette Seller, some of the members of New Beginnings Worship Center in Monroe. Would you clap your hands, amen. Anybody just glad to be in the house of God? Come on, pull back your head and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. To the word of God tonight, to the gospel according to Luke, chapter number 18, you're standing all over the building. Anyone that can stand, praise God. Amen. When I travel, I tell people, praise the Lord, I've kept my day job. Amen. I still practice law. I still spend my life trying to keep black boys and black girls out of prison. And parents, I have learned that if you teach your children to stand in the house of God, it's a very good chance they'll never stand before a judge waiting for a sentence. So come on, clap your hands and say, let's stand tonight. To the word of God, amen, to the gospel according to Luke, amen, the Gentile physician, Luke 18 and 1. And he spake a parable unto them, to this end, men are always to pray and not faint. Saying there was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not. For a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, for by her continually coming she wearies me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though they bear long with him? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. The word of God for the people of God, let the saints shout amen. amen. Come on, say it with power, shout amen. 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 Just for a second, amen. Our verse for thought, verse amen, number one. And he spake a parable unto them. To this end, men are always to pray and not faint. Reach over and grab the hand of your neighbor tonight. Look them dead in the face. That neighbor that's standing next to you trying to look cute and intellectual. Look them dead in the face and say, neighbor, I will not be silent. Clap your head and say, I will not be silent. Come on, put your hands together and praise him. Touch two or three people, say, I will not, I will not be silent. Clap your hands and shout glory. Oh, you can take your seat tonight. I will not be silent. Look at somebody and say, uh-huh. As we look at the sacred text tonight, we believe what the Bible says about itself. We believe 2 Timothy 3.16, that all scripture was given by inspiration of God. However, while we understand that the scripture was inspired by God, we also know that it was translated and interpreted by men from their positions of power and their 
perspective of patriarchy and privilege. And so because the Bible was translated and interpreted by men, women were considered insignificant, rendered to a second class citizenship. And so because of that, it's only logical that what women felt, what women thought, was not usually recorded in the sacred text. Just for sake of conversation tonight, in the King James Version of the Bible, there consists 1.1 million words. Of the 1.1 million words, 14,056 of those words were spoken by women. So that means that women, praise God, amen, are about, praise God, 1.2% of the speakers in the Bible. Of the 14,056 words spoken by women, only 93 women spoke. Of the 93 women that spoke, 49 were unnamed and 44 were named. The writer tonight, praise God, talks. The Luke 18 girl is one of the 44 women that were unnamed in the Bible. But, but how many of you know it doesn't matter huh, when people try to ignore you? Huh? It doesn't matter if people try to overlook you. Huh? It doesn't matter if people try to render you insignificant huh, when God is for you. Huh? I wish somebody would help me tonight. Huh? When God is for you, he's more than the world against you. Huh? And God always has a ram in the bush. God's always got somebody to remember you when others have forgotten. Touch your neighbor, say, God's not forgotten. And so, praise God, amen, he has utilized our brother Luke, the Gentile physician, to remind us that women matter to God. Touch your neighbor, say, women matter to God. Oh, clap your hands, say women matter to God. We're thankful for our bishop tonight. Clap your hands, say women matter to the bishop. And I matter to God. Clap your hands and shout glory. Yet, yet, despite Luke's largesse, he did not write about the Luke 18 girl just to show us, to demonstrate to us his praise God, amen, observation of the significance of women. He didn't just write about the Luke 18 girl to show us that God cared about women. But he wrote, praise God, Luke 18 as a response to what Jesus said in the concluding verses of chapter 17. Luke 18 is a response to what Jesus said. Now, now, now what did Jesus say? In the concluding verses of Luke 17, Jesus is sitting around the fire with his disciples and he begins to talk about the end time. He begins to tell them that, amen, he's going to praise God leave. He begins to tell them about sudden destruction. How many of you know that good parents don't just teach their children how to live? Good parents teach their children how to die. I wish somebody would say something right there. And so be a good parent, Jesus sits around the fireside and begins to share with his disciples that in the last day, the days would be like the days of Noah, and people would be married and into marriage. He said it'd be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, that people, praise God, would be married. He talked about Lot, and he talked about Lot coming out of the city. And then he says, don't forget Lot's wife, that people will be disobedient and rebellious. And then he says, praise God, he talks about the rapture. He said, going to be two women in the bed together, and one's going to be gone, and one's going to stay. And you can just imagine how the disciples felt. See them sitting around the fireside, leaning in. Even Thomas begins to believe, and Judas stops talking about the money, and God says, amen, he's on his way back. And all of a sudden, some disciple hollers, what are we going to do? How are we going to make it? And in response to that, Jesus says to this end, men are always to pray. He says, prayer is the answer. Touch your neighbor, say, prayer is the answer. Come on, clap your hands, say, prayer is the answer. 
And so in response to chapter 17, Jesus says, let me tell you a little story. Let me tell you a parable. There was in a city an unjust judge. Now he just uses one adjective to describe the judge. He calls him unjust. He says he's not fair. He is not right. We don't know if he's duplicitous in financial matters or is he morally unscrupulous. He's just unjust. He says of the unjust judge, I'm almost through. He says of the unjust judge, he says he doesn't fear God. He lacks reverence and he doesn't regard men. He lacks regard for each other. Now, now listen. We know some people. The world is full of people just like the unjust judge. America is becoming a godless nation. We print God in we trust on our money. We come on here while we take prayer out of the school and the Ten Commandments from the courthouse. We pledge allegiance to the flag. We say we're one nation under God while the blood of black boys cover America and the blood of un come on, unborn babies. We sing God bless America while we promote racism and hatred. We talk about God bless America while we contemplate taking the name of God off of our political parties. We have no regard for each other. Our children are being killed, not just in the inner cities, but in the suburban classrooms and the universities. Even the house of God is no place for safety or sanctuary because of the insidious demon called racism. We're being killed in prayer meetings on our knees. They're being slaughtered in synagogues. Trouble are everywhere. Our children are disrespectful. They talk back. Children are killing their parents. Parents exploit and kill and abuse their children because the lawlessness has increased. The love of many is wax cold. Wait just a second. Last year we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the death of Martin Luther King. Remember Martin Luther King had a dream that he lived in a nation where we wouldn't be judged by the color of our skin, but the content of our character. Unfortunately, that dream has never been realized. Now we shudder in the nightmare of racism. Our boys are being killed. I wish some mother would say something. We're not just being killed because of the color of our skin. Huh? We're not just being judged because of it, huh? but we're being killed because of it. Huh? Our boys are being killed, huh? coming home with sniddles huh? and a coke in their hand. Huh? Our boys are being killed huh? in the backs of cars, huh? in the back of the prison, huh? in the back of the grandmother's backyard. Huh? Oh God, somebody help me. Huh? Trouble is everywhere. Huh? No regard for God. Huh? No regard for man. Huh? But let me tell you something uh, no matter how bad it gets uh, God has always got somebody uh, clap your hands say he got somebody uh, reach over and tell somebody say are you that somebody uh, God's always got somebody in the city uh, he said in the same city uh, there was a widow woman uh, just one word to describe her uh, widow uh, that meant manless uh, she was by herself. Listen, not only was she a widow, didn't have a husband, we can infer that she had no son, no brother, no kinsman redeemer, no man to talk on her behalf. Somebody help me today. The lowest, on the lowest, on the lowest pole in, in society, the only thing lower than her was a slave. She was a widow woman that had a problem. Touch your neighbor, say, have you ever had a problem? They say her problem was one of importunity. Now, importunity does not mean huh, dismay huh, or disappointment. Huh, importunity means huh, angst of soul. Huh, it means agony. Huh, it means desperation huh, and devastation. Huh, when you pray prayers of importunity, huh, that's prayer set on fire. Huh, that's unrelenting prayer. Huh, that's prayer that won't let.
let go. That's prayer that won't shut up. That's prayer that says, I won't let go until he bless me. That's prayer that says, I will not. Oh, I want somebody to help me. I will not be silent. Clap your hand and shout glory. She had a problem, and so Jesus said, men ought always to pray. Get somebody by the hand and say, always. Grab somebody and say, always pray. Let me tell you something about prayer. Prayer is just talking to God. Don't your neighbor say, just talk to him. Prayer is talking to God. You can't call yourself a child of God if you don't pray. You can't call yourself a child of God if you don't talk to your father. Sometimes you call just to say, I love you. Somebody clap your hand and say, pray, 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 pray. I can't get no help at full gospel. Clap your hand and say, pray, pray, pray. Now, now let me tell you something about prayer. You can pray in good times. You, you can pray when, when bills are small and money's tall. You can pray when all your children are acting like they have good sense. You can pray when everybody that loves you, they love you back. But something about prayer in trouble, oh, I can't get no help. Let me tell you something. When everything is going well, you lay in your bed and say, God bless everybody. Thank you for the day, huh? but when trouble comes, huh? the bed gets too high. Huh? You slip down on your knees huh? and you stretch out prostrate. Huh? You can pray huh? when you eat breakfast, huh? lunch, and dinner. Huh? Thank you for the food. Huh? Thank you for the hands that prepared it. Huh? But when you're in trouble, huh? you drive past Popeye's. Huh? You, oh, God, you avoid Ruth Chris because huh? you know these kinds come out huh? back fasting and pray. Huh? Tell your neighbor pray. Clap your hands and pray. You can pray when everything is going right, but something about prayer in trouble. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, have you ever been in trouble? Look at somebody on your row. Ask them, have you ever prayed in trouble? I had a girlfriend. I had a girlfriend. I would call her friend and she would be driving across the country, huh? just speaking in tongues, huh? just speaking in tongues, huh? and I say, listen, I'm glad you're praying, but can you stop and talk for a second? She said, child, I got to pray. I ain't got no spare tire. She said, I ain't got no spare tire. I said, listen, listen, listen. You need to stop all that praying and buy you a tire. Three or four weeks later, I got in my car, had a flat. I didn't worry about it. Went to my trunk to get the tire. Spare tire was flat. What are you saying, Prophet of Floyd? You got to pray like you ain't got no spare tire. And you got to pray like your tire will go flat. I want you to know, oh God, you've got to pray. Grab your neighbor tonight. Say pray like you ain't got no spare tire. Wait just a second. What do you mean? You got to pray like you ain't got no husband. Pray like you don't have a 401k. Pray like you don't have any insurance. And if you think you something because you got that, remember spare tires go flat. Remember loved ones die out. They walk out and they move out. Grab somebody and say pray like you ain't got no spare tires. Pray like your spare tire will go flat. Clap your hand and shout glory. Listen, I've got to go. I was listening to Fran not too, not too many years ago. I went to the doctor all dressed up. Thought I was looking good. Just sitting there feeling fine in my body. 
feeling healthy and strong, nothing hurting. Doctor came out face round up. He said, things don't look good. Well, I just thought he's going to tell me that I've gained weight. I said, I just thought it worse. Uh, he, I, my cholesterol is high. I thought, Prophet Hall, huh, if worse comes to worse, huh, I'm pre-diabetic. Huh, when he came out, he said, no, huh, yes, you gained too much weight. Huh, yes, you need to lose weight, huh, but that's not what I'm talking about. Huh, he said, Janet, huh, I see cancer. Huh, I know what you're talking about. Huh, Y'all, the room began to turn and twist. Huh, I told him, can I have one second? Huh, I need to do something. Huh, went to the restaurant. Uh, got down on my knees uh, between the toilet uh, and the wall. Uh, I said, hey, Jesus, uh, this is Janet. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a servant, Janet. Uh, I haven't been perfect, uh, but I've lived for you. Uh, I don't have a husband. Uh, I ain't got no children. Uh, I need you to heal me. Uh, I was praying uh, in trouble. Uh, Spirit of God said, get up, girl. I'm Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals you. Y'all went through the process. Look at us, friend. We had a tussle with the devil, but sister, we won. Grab your neighbor, say pray. Why won't y'all help me shout pray? She, 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 she was in trouble. She was in trouble. Huh? Right there by the hand, say, have you ever been in trouble? Huh? When you get in trouble, huh? and when you get in trouble right, huh? you don't care who you offend. Huh? You don't care about protocol. Huh? It's about knowing who to call. Huh? Clap your hands and shout, pray. <laughs> the Bible says huh, that the unjust judge avenged her. But it was not because of her problem. It was because of her persistency in prayer. Just one more time, grab a hand and say pray. I want you to know God is looking for women that will pray. Is there any woman in the city? Oh, full gospel. God sent me to ask you, is there a woman in the city that will pray? Is there a woman in the city that will teach her daughter how to pray? Not just how to apply MAC makeup and walk in red bottom shoes. You gotta teach your girl how to pray. I can't get no help. Grab your sister, say pray. Oh, get somebody by the hand and say pray. Clap your hand and shout glory. It's time. Oh, Jesus. Clap your hand, say it's time to pray. Yeah, God is looking, looking for women that will pray, huh? looking for somebody that will pray. Huh? Look down your row and find somebody. Huh? Just look down the row. Huh? Say, is there anybody on the row huh? that can pray? Huh? Is there anybody on the row huh? know how to get in touch with Jesus? Huh? Clap your hand and shout glory. God is looking for women that will pray because we're living in the same time. We're living in worse days than the days of Noah. The Bible said in the days of Noah, men were marrying and giving into marriage. In 2019, men marry men and women marry women. Let me go right there. In 2019, even in the house of God, man stands in the pulpit, looks at his male lover, calls him the first gentleman. In 2019, a lesbian looks at her lover, calls her first lady. Look, we're in pride month. Wait just a second, precious. We're in Pride Month. They've usurped the rainbow, the symbol of God's covenant with the earth. Listen, they're bold. They're walking the streets. They're not scared. They're on the TV. You're going to accept it. You're going to like it. And the church says, by, And we're scared. And we're shaking. And we're nervous. 
we ask each other, you going to preach? You ain't going to preach that, are you? Don't preach about the casino. Pastor goes to the casino. You're not going to preach about drinking. Pastor got a bar in his hotel. You're not going to preach about adultery. The deacon got a girlfriend. I know you're not going to preach about homosexuality. You know the pastor got a gay lover. Oh, fool gospel. God is looking for somebody that will stand and say it's time to pray. He sent me here to tell you it's almost quitting time. He sent me here to tell you holiness is not a denomination. It's a standard of living. Grab your neighbor say, come on, let's pray. Why don't y'all help me? It's time to pray. Clap your hands and shout glory. God doesn't need, he doesn't need pretty women sitting in pretty churches, praying pretty prayers. He doesn't need politically correct preachers too afraid to speak truth to power. He doesn't need piecemeal programs, turkeys for Thanksgiving while the souls of men die. He doesn't need. I'm Bishop Greg Davis. I know you're being blessed from Prophetess Janet Floyd. Listen, you're watching the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. In case you tuned in in the middle, we are in Nashville, Tennessee, under the leadership of Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III. It's been an amazing week. It's not over, though. Let me tell you, those of you that need a prayer, you've heard the word of God from Pastor Fran Love and now from Prophetess Janet Floyd. If you've heard the music, you need prayer tonight. There's a number on the screen. There are anointed pastors, men and women of God, there to pray for you to meet the needs tonight. Dial the number on the screen. It's not over here, though, y'all. You can go and stream. Go to our website. It'll give you instruction because at 10 p.m. Uh, Central Time, which is 11 o'clock, a little bit after that maybe, the prophet Todd Hall, my friend and my brother, He's going to be leading us in a late night service. We don't do midnight no more. We're getting a little older. He's going to be leading us in late night service. He is the prophet of the house. He is our friend and brother, Prophet Todd Hall. God bless you. Listen, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, neither has it entered into your hearts. The good things that God has in store for you. Great things happen at midnight. Great miracles happen at midnight. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. We've heard so many great sermons since we've been here in Nashville. But the truth of the matter is, preaching got a minute, but only a praise could get him out. And when we continue to hear preaching after preaching, if there is not a response, there is no results. So to the thousands watching around the world, it is your time, it is your season to watch every door open, every man's bands loose, everything that you've been praying for is about to be released into your custody. You are getting out on good behavior. It is how you act, not how you preach, that will determine where God takes you. Now listen to me. There's a number across the screen, and every individual watching, if you sow, you will grow. If you sow, you shall grow. And I continue to hear the number 70, 70, 70. Many of you know that I do not come on often unless God imprompts me. And when Bishop David said, come, I heard the call of the Holy Ghost. He said, come now. All of you that sowed at 70, God is going to liberate your resources. That goes beyond money. That goes beyond marriage. That divorce shall not happen. That surgery will not happen. The issue with your children will cease by midnight. The text says, and at midnight. And we're approaching that here. And I want all of you to know, watching by the word network, again, your eyes have not seen, your ears, I'm being affected by that music. Y'all hear that? Your ears have not heard. It has not entered into your hearts. The good things that God has in store slash storage. Today, you're getting the key to your freedom. Prophet, pastors, prophets, apostles, evangelists, teachers, the importance of them to sow into something bigger. That's $70. The issue is God created the dirt. God sends the rain. 
If it rains and hits the dirt and you have been afraid to sow, you will be playing in the mud. That is the problem. Mud is hard to get out. If God made the dirt and he sends the rain and your seed is not there, when you get to the place of the harvest, you will be playing in mud. So it is very important that we as leaders, pastors, apostles, prophets, in a day where our ministries are experiencing famine, you must sow yourself. Malachi 3 was not just to the member, it was to the priest. Restore your passion to sow into other ministries. And when you sow into other ministries, God will sow into your $70. You need to sow it now, right away, unceasing. And I promise you, by midnight, God has a miracle for you. There's a number under the screen. Dial that number now. If you need prayer, there are capable prayer warriors waiting to touch God on your behalf. Word Network, you know, we come to you on Wednesdays and Fridays. This is your time to sow. As you're sowing, you're helping international ministry tonight. Money don't go to us. It goes to help preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you've been blessed tonight from this telecast and even the word of God, I want you to sow that $70. There's a release. We're in the seventh month. God is going to do some great things. Everybody's been prophesying by the 4th of July. It could be on the other side of midnight as you're releasing. God said, I'm going to do it on the other side. There's a miracle. Paul and Silas prayed, but on the other side of midnight, chains were broken. Prison doors came open, and they were freed. We got about two minutes before we leave you. I want you to dial the number. So that's $70. There's one of you that are watching that can give $1,070. Call the number on the screen if you're in need of prayer. Prophet, give us one minute and tell us what God is saying. The Holy Ghost is saying within 60 seconds, if you take the step out of the ship and not fear the storm, you will walk. And prophetically, when Peter stepped out on water, he stepped out on liquid and it held him up. Many of you need to hear me quickly. If your faith fails you not, God will make your liquid solid. He's about to give you liquidity, and you're going to walk on it, and God is going to build your resources to where the storm won't even get your attention. Be strong. So, to grow. 1,070 business owners, 10,000 billionaires, 70, the man that needs to be debt free. Do it now, in Jesus' name. Listen, go to the phone now. If you want information about Full Gospel, they can give you that information there. Our prayer counselors are there. If you want to know how to connect with Prophet Todd Hall, you can follow him at? ShabbatMinistries.net. And social media? Social media, praiseologists everywhere. For, follow Full Gospel FGBC. Also, I need you all to go follow Bishop Greg Davis now. We'll be back on tomorrow. At 12 noon Eastern Time, our presiding bishop, Bishop Joseph Walker, will be preaching tomorrow the final message on 4th of July from 12 noon until 2. We'll be on the Word Network. Make sure you tune in. We're about to leave you. You be blessed. Prophet Todd Hall, Bishop Rick Davis, we approve this message. Thank God for you. We'll see you next time on the Word Network. and declare a living God to a dying world, to grab hold to the horns of the altar, to challenge, amen, the saints of God to pray and to hell trembles and heaven hears and sends help, looking for someone that dares to say, I will not be silent. Get somebody by the hand today and say, I will not. Come on, talk to them, say, I will not. Them, say whatever you do, don't be silent. Tell them whatever you do, don't be quiet. Come on, tell them don't be silent. Open your mouth and give God the glory. Don't be silent. Clap your hands and shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Say no. No. I will not be silent. That's the mandate. Every hand is lifted. That's the mandate. Lift your hands. God wants to know.